One, two, three. There we go. All right, we're rolling. Um, so last week, um, I had an interesting Friday. Uh, I had all this stuff scheduled out, and uh, it uh, it was very interesting. I had to get a new phone. My phone had died, as you knew. I told you that. Right. Well, you've needed a phone for a while. That thing was a pile, man. That has got to be the worst phone. Well, it was a great phone in the beginning, and I had it for four years. And owning a phone that long, um, you know, it's going to crap out eventually. And I'm not going to turn around and spend $1,000 on another phone. I just can't make myself do that. You know, I I don't understand it. I I think they've caught on to the fact that everybody has taken landlines off of their house. Yeah. And they figured, we're going to charge them because they need it. It is. It's they've got they've got you roped into the necessity of you have to have one, and I do, I do I rely on my phone tremendously. I mean, we all do. Well, they cost more than a laptop now. They do, and that's that that's doesn't make any sense. None whatsoever. They're easier to make than a laptop. Yeah, uh, I don't get it. Well, that's because they can get away with it. And, and by the way, we're without Graham today. I want to go ahead and say, Graham, hope you feel better. So, anyway, no. So, what did you end up getting? So, anyway, so I ended up getting a phone that uh, my mom had. So, my mom hands me this phone with like a gold diamond encrusted case on it. And she's like, "Take that look. It's got a it's got a case on it and everything already." Bling. Oh, I'm like, yeah. God. This first thing I've <laughs> got to get rid of. So, anyway, I've got this phone. I wake up on my Friday. I've got my plan. I'm going to go visit AT and T, and then I'm going to try to find a phone store and see what my best option is for getting this phone activated. Because the phone was. A T-Mobile phone, my mom no longer had the account. I had to deactivate the T-Mobile lock on it. And there's not a lot of people out there that can do that. So I'm thinking, do I have to go to the Apple store? Do I have to? I know at and is going to tell me to go piss up a rope, which they did. But I thought maybe I could go in there and, and uh, bully them into a phone or something along those lines. So I'm headed to get th- this taken care of. And I'm going down uh, a busy street in, in the woodlands and I come across this dog. This dog runs out of the middle of nowhere and he's running and dodging around in traffic. And I'm like, Oh, this dog's going to get hit. And I'm not like just the most, I'm not the most soft person in the entire world, but I mean, I'm not going to sit here and let a dog get hit. You well, know? I don't know about that, Todd. You, you, you show compassion quite a bit, <laughs> especially towards the pets. Well, I mean, I'm not, like I said, I'm not going to let this dog get run over. So, I jump out of my truck. Me and about three other people jump out of their cars to get this dog. And uh, he's running back and forth through traffic. You can tell he's lost. He's got that look of, I'm just going to look straight forward and run. You know, I'm not paying attention. Sure. You've seen that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a game to him. It is. And so I go to get this dog. I almost get hit by like, two cars. And I finally get him cornered. And uh, he's not having anything to do with me. He's barking. He's barking. He's like, I don't, don't trust know you. you. Yeah, yeah, who are you? And I, I don't see a collar on him, so I'm damn sure not about to reach down and grab this dog. So I go back to my truck. I'd just gone into Waterburger. I had my water, my number one, got my Waterburger. Right. <laughs> so I go back and get that. I'm like, God damn it. This dog This dog is going to eat my Waterburger. So I rip off half the sandwich, give it to him, and the dog's like my new best friend, right? Oh, He's I'm sure. Bouncing off the walls. I mean, you can't give somebody a water burger and not be best friends after that, right? So. He's bouncing off the walls. I get him in the truck. This totally screwed my whole phone plans up for the day, and I end up with this dog at my house. So I get him home. He's a he's muddy. I do all the typical stuff. I go around. I look for flyers in the surrounding neighborhoods. We get on uh, uh, next door and post this dog. Take a picture of him, post him, and uh, just how's do he, the whole. How's he jiving with Maddie? That's what I want to know. I kept him separated because, like I said, he oh, didn't okay. have a collar, and I was right. worried. I have another rescue, and and I right. I didn't want those two to get mixed up because you don't know what the the you know if this dog has diseases or sure. whatever. Right, fleas, so I, whatever. So, yeah. Right, right. So I just kept them separated, and. Um, Ended up going the, to the next day, still no response from anybody uh, on, you know, hey, that's my dog or anything like that. So I'm thinking, I can't keep him. I mean, there, there's just no way. There's, sure. I, I've done all I can. I need to take this dog to a no-kill shelter. Mm-hmm. So I turn around, I take this dog to, I'm, I'm not going to mention the name, but I take this dog to a shelter that allegedly will take any animal that you bring in there. Mm-hmm. Was it a no-kill? It was a no-kill. Uh-huh. So... The woman meets me out front. I, I mean, this dog's going berserk. He's he's obviously I don't know if he knows where he's at. Or he thinks right. he's at the vet. But he may have started there. You yeah, know. he could be thinking. a rescue. Yeah, he's like, holy crap! I've been to prison. I don't want to go back. Right. 
So he's bouncing off the walls, and this woman comes out, and she's like, well, where'd you find him? I'm like, well, right over here. And I gave her the cross streets, and she, she thinks for a minute, and she goes and comes back, and she says, well, I think that's in Harris County. You're going to have to take this dog to the SPCA. I'm like, wait a minute. That's not that's not at all what we talked about on the phone when I talked with these other people and where to bring this dog. Sure. You know, she's telling me to take it to the SPCA, which they're going to put him down. I mean, right. you know, if they don't adopt him, he's done. Mm-hmm. So I hadn't gone through all this crap to have this dog put in on. So I just literally stripped my freaking tea right there. I start <laughs> cussing and yelling and putting on a spectacle thinking, if I act like an ass enough, maybe they'll just take the dog to get rid of me, right? Sure, yeah. <laughs> Come here, little dog. We'll save you from this monster, yeah. Apparently, no dice. They weren't buying the crazy act. So they're right. like, uh, we're going to ask you to leave now. And I ended up leaving with the dog. Wow. So at the same time, I'm dealing with this, the phone, and... Michael, Michael had had an oil change in his car. The drain plug, I won't, again, I won't give the name of the company, but the drain plug that they had put in the car fell out and leaked all the oil. So I'm thinking, okay, I've got a dog I don't need, a phone that doesn't work, and a car that's blown up because people can't do their job. Sounds like nobody in your day-to-day was able to do their job. Dude, it yeah. was terrible. I was yeah. a total train wreck. I was stressed to the max. I'm like, I'm oh, I can to, imagine. I'm yeah. fixing to lose it. Right. So, but it was, it was, it was awesome. I'll just give this little tidbit. I just said, you know what, God, before I just start punching people in the face, let's just sit back and I'll let you take control of this. And with, it's funny. And you know, you, you get to those, you get those, those circumstances and within 30 minutes, they had all resolved themselves. The people called, they came and got their dog. We found out that Michael's car was good and that, uh, I ended up getting a phone that worked. So, <laughs> so yeah. So it's just a matter of stopping, taking a pause. It's amazing what a, what a little bit of patience will do for you. If sure. you can if you can de stress and de escalate your own situation, it helps out tremendously. Well, well, just imagine the people in this world that don't have that centering mechanism that you have. True, you know, and that's the thing. You'd think how much they can get done if they were able to do that. It's and it's a it's a it's something that you have to be able to force yourself to do. You know, mm-hmm. I'm 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 a quick. I'm a quick tempered guy. I like to, I'm reactionary to a lot of, I can be. uh, Exactly. I try not to be, I try to, I try to assess and and then make a strategy from there. Although that's how I want to be. But a lot of times if I'm caught with the right set of circumstances, it's just like a switch, dude. It's like, boom, on. For me, it's a little more of a subtle thing. I'm going to stand there and give you a chance to ask for it. Right. You know, I'm going to try to be patient. I'm going to watch you Here's work. the rope. Let's see yeah. how far you make it. I'm going to see how far along the stairway <laughs> you get. You know, and if you're really trying hard, you just can't help yourself. I'm probably going to be very compassionate. Right. But if you run to the front of the line and just poke the bear. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm just going to unload on you as well. I mean, it's just, it's my moral responsibility. It's certain things. I just yeah. don't know what it is. I, I yeah. want it, like I said, I always <laughs> want to be the analytical guy that sure. sits back and says, all right. This is how we eat the elephant, and yeah. here are the bites. I mean, I like to be the guy that's helpful and helps people get through the day, but when they just sh- illustrate straight up, they're not interested in that. Right. And and a lot of what I heard you go through was the fact that nobody was really listening. They were just talking. Right. They were just saying yes. Oh, it was, it was a tell script. You you yeah, hear. here's the script. Yeah, yeah. here's the script. I'm going to read it to you, so swallow the pill. And, and that's unfortunate because that's everybody. I mean, uh, you, you can sit there and name off anywhere you interact with the public now. I, you know, when we go eat lunch, sometimes I'll sit there and I'll say, I'll have a, a half and half tea. I'll have a cheeseburger, no lettuce, no onions, no tomato. And she'll go, okay, would you like a cheeseburger? Would you like lettuce and tomato? And on on that? Oh, you just want and to I choke just, them. And I just explained to you exactly <laughs> in order so that you didn't have to think about it. Right. So they just, they don't listen. Nobody listens. Um, they're just looking at you with that blank stare and you just kind of wonder, what? How do you first of all find your way to work? Exactly. <laughs> I mean, how do you get here? Are your socks the same? Let yeah. me see. Did you clock in? Are you sure you <laughs> clocked in? I know. Anytime I worked in an industry where there was a time clock, hell, half the people forgot to clock in. Punch in. Now, some of that was by design. Yeah. So they can say, "Well, I got here at five. Well, that's funny because I was here at four, and you didn't show up till seven. Right. So you know, so you have a lot of that going on. But yeah, I can imagine. Getting through the day, you do have to stop sometimes and reflect and say, "Lord, just just keep me from <laughs> keep, keep me from going off." Exactly, Jesus, take the, the wheel, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. great song. Because I can't, <laughs> I, I, I can't cope with it either. I mean, and it seems like it's getting worse and worse and worse. We've got a bunch of people now that that are just excusing everything they do, and they don't give a shit about what your problem is. No, even though they're in a job. To help you fix your problem. Right. And that that's the part I don't understand. I, I sit here and I look around and I go, you know, um, I 
thank God for Amazon. Right. I'd be honest with you. No yeah. wonder Amazon. People want to know why Amazon's making so much money. That's right. It's because you go online, you interact with a computer, you tell you tell it what you want. Right. It tells you when you get it, and then when you get it, it asks you if you're happy with it. <laughs> if I can get a human being to do that, right, one time. Amazon might be in trouble. If you want, if you want to save save brick and mortar, Ken just gave you the way to do it. I'm right telling there. you, it is. It's just it's just the, the fact that nobody listens. They're preoccupied, and they forget this is how they're making their living by listening. Right. You know, and and me again, my switch goes if I repeat myself more than three times. Right. And if you ask me questions after I've already given you the answer. Uh, as we all know on this podcast, I am not good under pressure when it comes to questioning no. because I've already given you information up front. Right. All you need to know. Anything beyond that, go get an encyclopedia because right. I'm not going to tell you. It happens so much too in any mm-hmm. conversation that you have. Yeah. It uh, it's funny that that uh, people miss such key details of what you specifically point out. Sure. It, 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 I, I get that. I get how you get annoyed at that. I'll have conversations where. I specifically, I'll even put it in caps and say, here's what I typed out. Here it is in caps. And they'll turn right around and ask me the same question that pertains to what I wrote in caps. It's like, go look at your email. Why did I not, why did I even write that? Yeah. Oh, I know. It's, it's funny because when I, when I speak with somebody, I do my best to give you, if I'm looking for something, I should say, I'm going to give you all the details up front that I have. Right. All the criteria I'm looking for. Now, all you got to do is listen, absorb, and calculate in your brain where you're going to direct me to instead of asking me 50 questions that I've already answered. Right. I, I just, I don't know, man. I, just I mean, we're talking, I can see how people miss stuff, but when sure. you write it down, no, I how do you, that. I mean, go back and reread. Yeah. Especially, I mean, but no, to your point, yeah, I mean, it's not like I speak to the to the level right. that it's difficult to remember what I said. I just told you in, in a 20-word soundbite I know. what I need. Well, my favorite thing is when you go to a fast food place and eat, and there's a picture on the keyboard. Oh, beautiful. You know, and they, and, and they still ask you questions. Yeah. And if you throw a curve at them, like, I'd like jalapenos and cheese on that, there's no key for that. What do I do? What do I do? Dude, really? It reminds me of those yeah. episodes of Beavis and Butthead yeah, when they yeah. would work in the, yeah. the burger. The I forgot what it was. It had the big W out there. Right. And they would stand there. They'd be talking. You know, they'd be ter- they'd be taking the order, and they'd just be looking at the keys going, ah, ha, 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 ha. He didn't know what to push. It was awesome. He never would push what they wanted. Yeah. It's, and it's just like, oh, my God, that's who we're dealing with. And it's that simple. I mean, I, I don't know. <laughs> I, like I said, we can go on for days on that stuff because it's just so frustrating. Yeah. You know, for me... um, I don't know. I've had a. I've been staying at home mostly uh, the last few weeks, so I really haven't interacted as much. I guess maybe because I've reached my tolerance and I'm just rebounding. Right. But uh, it seems like online is taking on a whole new life for me. Um, it just seems easier. Okay. Like I said about the Amazon thing a minute ago, I tell it what I want. It tells <laughs> me what it costs and when I'm going to get it. And I'm I'm happy now. Did, I'm moving. Did you on. buy anything on Amazon you while know, you were sick? Just yeah. Well, I bought weird things like broccoli sprout uh, seeds because I want to sprout broccoli. I know this is going to sound weird, <laughs> but uh, I've been trying to eat really healthy here lately and, and take better care of myself. And and for the most part, it's worked. But uh, I heard that broccoli sprouts are really good for you. Okay. So I was like, I went to Amazon. And I thought, first of all, how do you search for broccoli seeds, right? <laughs> So I just put in broccoli sprouts, and it gave me all these different options. And like I said, it was just like within two days. If you're on Amazon Prime, it's amazing. It's amazing. That stuff gets here quick. I I, I love it. You know, it's funny you mentioned that because I've been on the, the tool kick lately, obviously, because yeah. we've been talking about it. And I've bought all these different tools. And it's been so much easier to get online and get exactly what I want. I do all my research. You know, I get on. I watch all the videos. Mm-hmm. I study what I want. Um. This week I bought, uh, what did I buy? I bought a saw, a table saw, and then the cool thing that I bought is a 3D printer. I was really stoked. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I was really stoked about getting this 3D printer because did I- Did you order online or did you go buy it? Online. Okay. I, I, there was really no place. I guess I could have went to a couple of the larger- Micro Center had some. Yeah. I was going to say there's a couple of the larger outlets like Micro uh-huh. Center and probably Fry's. And we're not advertising for Amazon or, or Micro Fries Center. Or Micro Center. Center. <laughs> we're just, right. we're just this that's res- our local thing. So, it is. Yeah. So so I I get online and I do two weeks worth of research. You oh, know, wow, I, that's a lot. It is. I, I and I'm not going to say I sat there every day, but the 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 day before I ordered, I think I watched videos 
on materials, on printer types, on what people like, what they didn't like, probably for eight hours straight. I I, I was so mind numb. You know, I would pick one. Sure. This is the thing. This is what I do. I pick one, and I think, okay, this is the one I'm going to get. And then I would go look, and there would be a couple of negative reviews, and I'm like, oh my god, I got to research this to the nth degree to see, okay, is this a real thing or, or is this just a couple of people sure. that had a problem? Mm-hmm. So. Two weeks of that. By the end of it, I was stressed out. I was just like, "Eff it, I'm buying a brand." <laughs> so you think you got a good one, huh? I think I think I got one. Uh-huh. I bought a. Um, it's a mono, a mono spirit. M three, I believe, is what uh-huh. it's called, uh, or I three. I'm sorry, mono spirit I three. It's got a. It's got a smaller. It's got a smaller print bed to it, but it prints at the micron level that it printed at. Worked really well for me. Which is what's important. That's where you get a lot of your detail is in, in how small you can get and how detailed. Well, I notice a lot of them are ridged. They have a lot of ridges. So does this mean the ridges are smaller? It, well, what it means is, okay, so when you when you develop those ridges, it's because you're printing too fast. So oh, they're okay. laying down a lot of material fast, and that's where you see the ridges. Oh, okay. So when you want to smooth that out, what you do is you slow your print speed down, and you need your print head to print at the finest micron that oh, possibly okay. can. So that's how you get rid of... That's how you get detail in your So that's an important thing to look for if you're looking for one. Which is what I tried to study all week long. The the other thing that comes into play is the materials. You have, and I'm I'm hoping I'm not boring anybody to death. I find this stuff fascinating. Sure. It's, you've got PLA, which is your standard plastic that's biodegradable. You have ABS, which is a non-biodegradable plastic. And another, there's just a plethora of materials. You can print in wood now. What they do is they take filament, what that stuff's called is filament. And you can print in wood, metals, all oh, kinds wow. of stuff. Yeah, it's crazy. So I wanted a printer that could do all that because I don't sure. know what material I'm going to end up using for the mm-hmm. project that I'm working on. And uh, it, it was just this 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 whole search. And finally, and I got on Amazon and said, there's the printer. Let me get it there. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I know. I mean, it's funny because, you know, I've been looking for 3D routers. And I yeah. found a couple I like. And, and you know, it, it's funny the price jump. In them, I mean, the bed size is an important thing, but once you start getting into like water cooled motorized heads and things like that, because you know those things are loud, they have high RPMs. Yeah, the prices are just they can just jump they, all they, over. The they place. go from Chinese because yeah. I've looked at the same thing. I've, I'm in the yeah. same boat as you. I love yeah. tools, yeah, and that's a cool tool to have. And you can go from Chinese junk all the way up to I'm sure the stuff you're looking at. You know, well, you know, it's funny that you mentioned Chinese junk because back in when I was a kid, that was a boat. Yeah. Okay, now it's all over Home Depot and Lowe's. <laughs> Sorry, Home Depot and Lowe's, but you guys buy crap. Yeah. Okay, I mean, when you go in there and you look for screwdrivers and you go buy a set and, and they snap off, at least buy real metal. Whoever the buyers are there, quit worrying about the price. Right. Okay? We'll I don't, pay for quality yeah. as long as you give me, you know. I don't care if I have to pay five ninety nine instead of one ninety nine for a screwdriver. Right. Okay? If I have to go back and spend one ninety nine five times... I'm going somewhere else, and so quit using that mentality because that's that all that does is piss me off. Right. Um, I'm just going to go to an antique store and find an old set of screwdrivers and just refurbish them because there's nothing saw blades. I think you and I talked about saw blades yes. the other day, and there's a huge difference in the quality that these guys are selling. I know my wife, lawn furniture. Yeah. Oh my god! I mean, you know, <laughs> if they make something decent, they want to charge you two thousand dollars for it. Right. So if they put something on sale for four ninety nine, guess who wants to buy that? Yeah, that's your wife. And My wife wants to up. buy that because she's going with the scale of economy. We're not going to use it very often. It's going to be outdoors. And I'm like, that's the reason why you don't buy that one because it, it's going to take one rain and it's done. Sure enough, one rain and it was done. I'm like, okay. I'm and not then buying she's it. looking at you like, how'd this happen? Yeah. And I'm like, well, I'm just going to build the next one. But yeah, it's funny because, you know, getting what you pay for, I mean... We, we live, I, mean, I don't know, we just live in this day and age where common sense just went out the window. Yeah, no. There's you know, no. and it seems to be it's all about the price. I mean, we've talked about this about cars and boats, and they don't care what the overall cost is. They just want to know what their monthly note is. Right. It's like, come on, people. I mean. Well, that's how you arrive. I mean, and that's know, how we arrive at where we are is because people right. just totally lose quality, and it's all about a dollar. Well, they always say that the, the right vehicle for you is, or the right boat for you is the second boat you buy. Right. Because you made the compromise on the first one. You've lived through all the heartaches on that. And then when you finally get rid of that albatross, <laughs> you go out and you actually spend the money on something that's fairly decent. Right. And and then you go, I should have done this in the first place. Because it just costs you more than just money. 
Well, just the maintenance on a boat. Oh, yeah. That's that's got to be huge. And the so fun. the quality, yeah. yeah. I mean, there's nothing worse than loading up friends saying, "Hey, let's go fishing." You get out there to the boat dock and you boat you back your boat down and won't start. Right. Or you do back your boat down and it does start and you get halfway out in the lake and it quits. <laughs> it craps out, yeah. You know, and and you find out that it's some pop metal piece of shit relay that if they'd have just spent money on real steel. Another ten cents. And it would have been it would have been just fine, y'all would have had a good time. But yeah, you know, it's just funny because you know, I, I, the theme here is just, you know, getting what you pay for. Definitely. I mean, it really is. I mean, you sit there and you walk around, you know, and you're do all the research that you do yeah. to, to find something. You um, you have this huge investment of emotion right. in it. Well, and research has become tough because you have yeah. to watch so much to try to gather, okay, is this guy trying to sell me something? Is he right. in the pocket of these guys? I mean, where... That's a good point because YouTube, you know, uh, YouTube is full of videos of not just the average Joe using it, but a rep. Sure. Selling a product, I've, I've and they noticed. make it look they make it look like oh I bought this tool and it's like right. no that uh, you work for them and they gave that to you uh, that's exactly right I'd rather see the dude that bought the money yeah or spent the money I'm sorry and bought the bought the equipment and told you the good the bad and the ugly yeah because what the one thing I do like about YouTube are the guys that the hacks yeah that are able to take something that was mediocre and really step it up. Right. So those are the things I kind of enjoy about it. Well, and that's kind of been my experience with what I, and that's what finally drove my decision on the printer. I said, okay, look, so, and this is where, this is where I got to in my study. If this part fails, if X, Y, or Z fails, whatever, whatever the part is that, that these folks claim, that, cause they all fail. What I learned is all, all of these printers fail at some point in some area. Sure. So what I learned was, look for the easiest replaceable part that there is. In other sure. words, can I get to this part easy? Is it easy to replace? Is it out there in quantity? In other words, it's going to be there when I need it to replace it. So that would be the head probably? The head, you, you yeah. look at the the, the head, the, the step motors which drive the thing generally don't fail. And uh-huh. that's that's really where you want to invest your money is, is you want to look at step motors right. and then the drive system itself. As long as that's solid, you can replace all the other components, whether it's motherboard or whatever else craps out on you. Yeah, no, I can't wait to get it. I want to see how that works. I've seen I've seen videos of it and I've seen live demonstrations, but yeah. but to sit there and to program something and then print it, yeah, that would be a lot of fun. I mean, you know, because like yourself, I'm I'm a, I'm a fairly competent craftsman and I like to just build little projects. And the last thing I want to have to deal with is a tool that doesn't work when yeah. I need it. Yeah. But what was funny is when I started, man, I was just broke ass poor and I just had more ambition and. And determination than I had tools. And I found that I actually can build just as well with fewer t- tools. Right. The old hand tools. Like I had old hand planes and draw knives. And, and I was really lucky because as a kid, this uh, elderly gentleman that lived down the street from me, um, had me. he let me use his tools. Right. And when he got to where he got tired of woodworking, he says, hey, you want all these? <laughs> I'm like, are you kidding? He goes, wow. no, man. I says, I don't have any kids to give them to. So I literally walked away with what a shop. treasure, man. That's like somebody saying, here's all my gold. It I want is. you to have it. Well, my brother has them all now. So oh, my wow. brother in Missouri has them. And because um, I didn't bring them down here with me, I, I, of course, became sophisticated and started buying power tools. <laughs> and he sends me pictures every once in a while of the him, old planers and all yeah, that all stuff. the stuff he's making stuff with those tools. So it's very cool. But, you know, when you look at the quality and the, the craftsmanship and tools back in the day, you have to remember, people were making their living with them. It's, you funny, it's funny you mention that. I've still got my grandfather's electric drill, and that thing will drill holes to this day. It's heavy. It's bulky. Oh, yeah. It's nowhere near as er- ergonomic as the other power tools that I have. But that sucker turns on, turns off, and it's from the 50s. I mean, you look at this thing. It's got a big metal case around sure. it. The, the plastic's the old... Black. I wish I could describe. It's just like vulcanized plastic on sure. the on the grip. And it was made in America too. It wasn't oh, made, dude, what made in Bangladesh or China or Thailand or wherever else that's coming from? Metal gears. When you fire it up, you can hear all the metal gears whirling in this thing. Well, back then there was pride in depend in, in dependability. Now it's all about um, getting you to go back and buy the second one. What's yep. it called? Ob- planned obsolescence. Yeah, uh, obsolescence. Yeah, and, and 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 that's the sad part. I mean, again, it comes back to where we are as a society. Uh, a society of consumers that, um, like my wife, she'll spend four ninety nine five times, right? As opposed to spending twenty five dollars the first time. You know, it's funny you mentioned the the the, the making things planned obsolete. Mm-hmm. I, I thought that was interesting. 
I'm going to kind of plug this company here because I found it fascinating. I had a bunch of old, and it's not. I know that this is not the best company in the world, but I found I had an old bunch of Ryobi tools and power tools. I had a Ryobi skill saw that was battery operated. I had a uh, jigsaw, a sander. Um, it wasn't a hammer drill, but I've got a drill. And they, these were all battery operated from mm-hmm. the early 90s. I'm thinking, not nah, man, I'll never be able to get batteries for this thing. Ryobi still uses the same batteries, and they offer them in, instead of NICAD, which is the old technology, they offer it in the new lithium stuff. Uh huh. And it's like same chargers. They'll cross compatibility with chargers and all that stuff. And if, if you need batteries, they sell batteries. These new batteries go in it. I was impressed because it seems like they'd want you buying sure. their new stuff. Just say, hey, screw you. You know, we, we know you've had that since the 90s. That's 30 years ago. Well, you know, when you think about it and you have a, a drill that quit working and the battery's still good and the battery doesn't fit anything else, yeah, you're less likely to go buy that guy's product because you're pissed off that the right. battery doesn't fit anything. So Ryobi actually thought their way through it. I heard a guy one time tell me when you're buying tools, especially new tools, always go buy what's on a job site. Right. Go look at what those guys carry on a job site. And see, I see a you, lot of DeWalt stuff. I'm impressed. I'm impressed. Rockwell, yeah. DeWalt, Craftsman. Those are the three. Those are the ones that I always look at. Yeah. Now, it's interesting because I think Rockwell just sold, so I don't know how they're going to do. I, that saw, the, it's funny you mentioned uh, that the saw I just bought was a Rockwell. Yeah. I'm impressed with it. It yeah. runs like a sewing machine. Man. Well, I remember back in the day when um, everybody had a circular saw, and then Craftsman came out with that warm drive skill mm-hmm. saw, and mm-hmm. I used to build homes, and... And I'll tell you what, that was a game changer. That saw, you couldn't kill it. Yeah. But the problem with it was, it was so efficient, you had to watch it. Really? Oh, yeah. You know, because, you know, when you get used to a saw and you run it, it bogs down, and you just kind of manage it. Yeah, yeah. This thing didn't do that. It, it just kept it, trucking, Yeah, it just huh? kept on trucking. So, it, <laughs> it was a learning curve with it. But it's, it's funny because um, we live in a DIY uh, age right now. Right. And television kind of pushes everybody into the DIY. Now, I remember when DIY TV first came out. And it was actually really good. I yeah. mean, you had skilled carpenters explaining stuff to you. Explain, this is yeah. how you do that. Now it's it's just, all reality TV. It's all reality. It's Betty and Bob. Nobody that has never touched a tool in their life. And ninety percent of the show is their their little conflict that they yeah. have. I could care less about that, dude. Show me how you put the wall right. in. Show me what you did to resheet rock. Show me how you insulated. That's oh, what I want to know. I mean, I know that stuff, but I'm saying, sure, you want to see That's the it. kind of crap that you want to know. Yeah, now it's opinionated. It's yeah. like they walk. Oh, this is ugly. I hate these curtains. Yeah, we know that. That's why you're buying it to remodel it. <laughs> exactly. You know, um, just show us what you're doing. So it's funny what I when I watch these shows, I don't watch. Two thirds of the show, I just fast. I record it, then I fast forward to the reveal. See how, yeah, and see what they see, did. I yeah. just want to see the before and the after because right. I don't really care about all the bickering and all the bullshit. Oh, it's That's, painful, it, it, and it, it seems like it's everything. Like cooking shows, I remember on the Food Network back in the day when the Food Network came out, and I was in an industry that was supporting some of those channels at the time, and it was legit. I mean, they were putting on first class instructional shows. There was a series on PBS for years called Great Chefs, Great Cities, which was one of the best there was. You had Graham Kerr, you had Pasquale, you had Justin Wilson, you had all these guys out there that had really good cooking shows like Julia Child. Now you got all these stupid food competitions. Look at look at the look and at the, the chef that screams at everybody. I can't think of his name. Oh, Ramsey? Yeah. Now I will tell you something. Gordon Ramsey, I, I've met him, I've talked to him, I've been in a kitchen with him. Okay. He is the nicest guy. Okay. He's very smart. That's television. That's all it, television. It is, and that's what I was driving at. Yeah. The guy might can cook up a storm, yeah. but I can't watch his show because I don't need... Look, right. I face drama every day. I have people yelling right. at me. I don't need to come home and watch it on TV. Well, I'll tell you what. Nobody can do it better than him, though. That guy... It's funny. I mean, it's entertaining, yeah. I guess, too. Well, you got a rugby player that's a <laughs> chef, and you know what is he's from Scotland, second of all. I right. mean, that guy is just... I, I honestly, I, I thought when I first met him, he was pretty cool. He was he was speaking up front of a restaurant group that we were at, and you know, and then I, I've just seen him in it. I've been to some openings in Vegas where at chefs' tables, and he was at one of them. And I mean, you know, off camera, that guy is just a different dude. You know, I, he doesn't put up a lot of bullshit. Though, yeah, but I mean, how many it's... Brits do? How many Europeans do though? Yeah, I mean, when you talk, you know, you talk about a man's man, okay. 
you either are or you're not over there. Right. I mean, there is no middle of the road like there is here. <laughs> you know, I mean, how many Brits do we know? And we love every bit about them. Oh, yeah. Because you just know where you stand. Right. There's no bullshit with those guys. They'll call it out in a heartbeat. But they're also the first ones to fight to the rug for you, too. That's true. You know, and so there's a lot to be admired there. So he's just that guy. Um, so no, no, like I said, yeah. I get that it's TV. Yeah. It's just like I said, yeah. I, I just want to, I'm like you, I want to see, show me what I can do. So That's you got to ask yourself, to. why the big sell then? Why do they do this? And it's because they like the conflict and the drama. They do. I, well, I think it comes back to the, what they think viewers want. I think, okay, so in the beginning we were watching the DIY when it first started mm-hmm. out. It's all this interesting stuff that you and yeah. I like. Well, we tell people about it. Yeah. Then their wives start watching. And then their kids start watching, right. and they want to, they think, okay, well, they got to entertain us. They right. got to they got to throw something out there that's entertaining. So mm-hmm. let's let's put some conflict. People think that's funny, right? You know, it's like, dude, just, it's, it's, I want to build stuff. Come on. It, and I, I got to say, it goes back to shows like Survivor. Yeah, I hate Survivor. It's a formula. You know, it, it's funny. So when when Survivor first came out, we used to have Survivor parties, and we'd all come over and watch Survivor. Right. And I always thought there's something missing with Survivor. First of all, it's not surviving, it's existing. I was going to say the dead bodies. That's yeah, what it's, it's existing is what that show is. If you really want to take this show to the next level, Mark Burnett, remember who we are yeah. because we're going to give you this million dollar idea. You take a bunch of ex-military guys yeah, and then you drop these millennials on an island with a pocket knife, a candle, a compass, and a map, and maybe some ramen noodles because they know how to make that shit. <laughs> And you give them a 12-hour head start. Right. And then you cut those guys loose after them. We're not going to hurt them. We're just going to hunt them. We're just going to hunt them and yeah. capture them and make them listen to Yanni music or something. Any, until, anything to make them cry. Yeah. And, and whoever, yeah, we'll make them listen to Rush Limbaugh. That'll really oh. do it. And then what you do is you just hold them hostage and whoever gets to the extraction point wins a million dollars. I like that. I'd watch this show every week, dude. Now, if the military gets there first, the million dollars goes to benefit veterans needs there you go okay. i would predict right now no one no ever one. makes it to the finish line <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna go ahead and, and lay whatever amount of money yeah. anybody wants to bet on this see i mean right that's now. survivor i mean you know yeah now what you do though to throw a twist in is you maybe have some tribal knowledge where you uh, if you're in the aboriginal area of the world you give them a couple aborigines and help these millennials through right just watching you just hope that, they don't eat them you know watching that would be fun just <laughs> purely to see somebody taking instruction from somebody that's so so connected to the earth sure you know because what i think is funny what i think you'll see is this person will just start picking flowers and just going over the edge of the whole and then the aborigines guy standing there looking i'm like what the hell did they do to me who did they give me here what's going on in america is what i'm really gonna say so you know reality tv is you know i'm hoping i'm hoping it's over die please die we want the. i mean I remember when History Channel first came out, and I would watch War of the World, you know, World War One, World War Two. Right. History shows about America, Lewis and Clark. Now it's Ice Road Truckers yeah. and Alaskan Gold Diggers. You know, I used to live for that. That's funny. Yeah. The, the, hist- the history of yeah. the war. I, I remember coming home on Friday nights because it would come on like after the news and uh-huh. after Carson. You'd have to stay up till like eleven thirty yeah, or one. I remember this World at War. I think it was called it, that's it. Victory Sea and World at War. That's it. Yeah. And if you stayed up late past the news and past Carson, it would come on. And my dad would let me stay up on Friday nights, and we'd watch it together. I gleaned so much information from just just that grainy footage that was out there. So how much of that helped you with history class in school? Tons. Me as well. Tons. You know, the problem is they're not teaching that in school I was going to say, anymore. what history? You look yeah. at you now like you had three heads if you went in with it's, that information. It's amazing, isn't it? I mean, the things that, the things that history teaches you, I mean... Um, because, you know, for me, Lewis and Clark was a big deal. I, I felt like that was equivalent to the man walking on the moon. Right. You know, because, I mean, think about it. You, you have Lewis and Clark, the great Louisiana Purchase. Then you have the Manifest Destiny, where we're actually building railroads, connecting two coasts together. I mean, that's the rich history of the rugged individual American you that know we what, are missing today. You know what you just made me think of by saying this? It's just some, it's some little fact I want to throw out there. Did they sell the encyclopedias door to door when you were a kid? They did. I remember the what was it Funkin Funk Funkin Wagnalls. That's it. I couldn't yeah. think of the name of it. We and had Encyclopedia Britannica set. and Funkin Wagnalls. Yeah, I had the Funkin Wagnalls. Yeah. That's who we ended mm-hmm. up going with. Sure. And I remember I had almost all of them. I think I was missing like the B and. There was like one other I was missing. Dude, I would stay up reading that stuff. Oh, yeah. That's, that's the only way you had to fact check when we were a kid, man. So I had that. We had the encyclopedias, but when the when the space program was big, I had um, 
I joined this, um, like it's like a book of the month club, except it was about space. Right. And so the first one you got was about the planets. Then the next one you got was what does it take to be an astronaut? Then you actually got a model of the uh, Mercury and Apollo rockets that you got to build. And you would get a book and you would get stamps and, you know, and you would put the stamp in there and learn about what's going on. And then when the actual rocket launches were occurring and we would watch them on TV. Right. The book had you ready to go. You you were you were read up. You were read up. You knew what was going on. You knew the importance of the space program. Right. You learned all about what reentry was. And they the did that with the shuttle as well. When the shuttle yes. programs, I remember that because they came and I yeah they wanted like ten or twelve bucks and I didn't have yeah. the money to spend on it. But yeah, right. I remember that. That was so yeah. Cool. So I mean, you know, you know, we talk about interactive learning and that was huge. I mean, it had a national interest. It was definitely something that was important to the uh, progress of of our nation anyway. And um, I don't I, honestly. I just I, I now I just look at what what these kids teach and or they're taught in school, and yeah. I'm like, I shake my head. I mean, I, and I'm not discrediting it because if you're a smart person or if you have the desire to learn, you'll pick this information. You're gonna you're gonna pick this information up yeah. and learn. I'm talking about the masses that just want to get through school. Right. I'm talking about the ones that show up because they have to go there, and it's unfortunate because just the other day we were watching a video about this kid that came in the classroom and he's screaming and hollering and cussing his teacher right and i sit there and i watch that you're just going please just flatten him just yeah. knock him right in the dome we're all sitting here worried about what goes on in school yeah well it's it's the behavior okay when you have a kid that acts like a shit yeah. and has no respect for not only the adult but him to me that's no respect for himself he disrespected that whole class everybody, everybody. stopped learning everybody stopped what they were doing everybody and paid attention for that for 10 minutes nobody learned nothing but so, this kid's an ass so i gotta ask myself where do you get that you get that from the real world you get that from big brother you yeah. get that from survivor you get that from all this shit that they show on television that takes you away from from good manners right from good behavior and, and you sit there and you say we want you to be tolerant towards this cause Okay, I want you to believe what I believe in. Okay, because I right. want you, to, but I don't really care what you believe. in. Right, because it's, it's like a false radar. narcissism that they have. It's, it is. it's about you, but it's really not about you. Yeah, it's, it's really this fake narcissism. Yeah. so I'm going to comply until it's uncomfortable. So I, I, I just, I don't know. I think it's between between the food channels, <laughs> DIY, and the social <laughs> engineering programs. You kind of got to wonder why these, why people. I mean, even adults. I watch adults act out drama. Sure. It, it's funny. I remember back when I was a kid, Dallas and Dynasty. Right. And I can remember people that we knew that would start acting acting like these people right. they saw on TV. I, I used to pick up on that pretty quick. Well, think about it. You never really used to see, unless you grew up in a dysfunctional home, you, you never used to see your parents fight. Right. There was a reason for that. That's they didn't right. want you to have to deal with their problem. Yeah, if they did, they went off back in another right. room somewhere or sent you out to play. That's right. You know? And yeah, nowadays, it's just... it's just Everything's drama. It takes all, all the drama. It takes all the yeah. drama. And you, you carry that crap around with you and you think, okay, well, it's about me, apparently. So yeah. well, I think that's know, where that comes from. And what's funny is because, like, uh, I, I, hate to, I hate to admit this, and I probably should should never say this, but I've never laughed so hard as when I watch something like a Jerry Springer show. Yeah. Now I can tell you, I watch that and I do laugh at the human tragedy. Oh yeah. But I sit there and I just, it just makes me laugh. Sure. Now, am I going to go home and act like that? Not even a little bit. I don't have any of that in me. Well, and then look at what point in your life that you're watching that. You yeah. know what I mean? Sure. That, that sure. makes a huge difference. Can, I mean, yeah. Ken's probably the most mature person that I know, well, to a large degree. So I have my depending notes. depending on his moment, but <laughs> very, yeah, very very rarely does he have immature moments. Start, but anyway, start with the questioning, and we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see how thing. quickly that that devolves. <laughs> um, but no, I, I get that, and I think I think you're dealing with somebody that can sit back and say, "All right, these are paid actors on the screen, and I'm enjoying it." You know, yeah. that we pulled these idiots off the street and gave them five hundred dollars to come sure. in and act out this scenario. Yeah. And you give that to a, a young head full of mush, and they're looking at it going, you know, my girlfriend cheats on me too. Oh, I better get her on the Jerry Springer show, or I better act like this asshole's acting. Well, they acted out in public. That's exactly. the problem. Or they acted out in school. It's funny because for me, like my guilty pleasures, I, I just love Joe Dirt. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, uh, movies like Joe Dirt, Happy Gilmore, 
those two, those movies, Tremors, movies that are just totally ridiculous yeah. and suspend reality. Well, it's then, escapism is what it is. But I then get you that. can go, I went to school with a dude just like this, you yeah, know? Yeah. And, and so for me, yeah, it's definitely escapism. It's me, it's, it's a... Well, now you can say, I went to a school that was like this rather than just a dude. Well, like that 70s <laughs> show. I watched that and I, I definitely know a lot of people like that. Yeah. It was, you know, and you just sit there and you look at that and you go, but I don't go around acting like that. Right. You know, I, um, I, I just, I don't know. For me, I just sit there and I look at people and I just shake my heads. I go, man, why are you guys such followers? I mean, you know, why are you accepting things that are not right like that? Like like the tools. Right. Well, it, it's tool. To think about it, we, yeah. we covered tools and now yeah. we're covering tools. Yeah, tools literally. <laughs> There's nothing wrong. I mean, I, I'm the kind of guy that I write a letter to everybody. If, if I've learned as, as a manager that's been getting those letters. Right. There is power in that. If you sit there and you approach that company with a complaint, you will get a response. Yeah. And generally, you know, the, the problem is the one I don't want is when they send me $100 worth of coupons of, for something that didn't work in the first place. Right. It's almost like it's an insult. But um, but at least you're doing something. You tried. Yeah. I will say at least you tried. Well, you're rechanneling that energy instead of going out in public. Because I'll never forget, we were, we were, and I will name it, we were at Lowe's. Okay. A neighbor and I went to Lowe's and he was looking for something. And we talked to five people. Not a one of them in there knew what we were looking for or where to find it. Right. We eventually found it. I've, I've done that at Home Depot too. It's not. It's, it's not specific not, yeah, to Lowe's. Sure. It's any of them. So we went. We found it. So as we were walking towards the front, there was this really attractive young lady. Looked like she's from the home office. Had her nice little Lowe's badge on and right. everything like that. And asked us if she could have a few minutes of her time. And no. Said, yeah. Sure. Not a problem. She goes. I'm going to ask you just five questions, and then I'm going to give you like a fifty dollar gift card to use for your time we're just doing a survey he goes okay so she says um have you shopped at lowe's before he goes oh yeah i've been here several times she goes um did you find the store to be clean and in order oh yeah we found that did you find everybody to be helpful and friendly he goes well i found it to be extremely friendly and she goes you have a little trepidation can you expand on he goes well they're actually really honest too and she goes really would you like to expand it helps our survey with our home office he Mm -hmm. goes sure I asked them if they knew where something was, and they said no. <laughs> I asked them if they can help me find something, and they go, um, that's not my department. Then she goes, oh, okay. So All she, with a smile all on with her a face. Smile, and she gave them the gift card right. you know, for $50 off. And I was like, well, you know, shame on her. She asked the question. Yeah, I mean, you can't, you're not going to get roses. I don't know what no. you're expecting going into a store. Yeah, asking, I, right? I mean, you know, you're only as good as the people you hire. And, and you know, this whole argument about, well, you hired – this certain pay level. Well, I'll tell you something. That's a bunch of bullshit. If you own a business and you're hiring somebody with lowered expectations, then your business is going to fail. I'll give you. I'll give you an interesting example. Uh, another one, since you've mentioned several Ace, I shop at Ace by my uh-huh. house a lot. Okay, mm-hmm. they hire older men that are retired from the field, right? And these guys actually have side businesses that they run. Well, like, they're usually a plumber, or electrician, an air conditioning guy, or a carpenter. But not only that, they're still running side businesses as right. handyman and stuff like that. And they said, you know, Ace lets us hand our cards out, right? but they keep us here because we know what we're talking about. We've done it. We've worked with it. I said, that's absolutely genius. What a what a brilliant hiring practice. Because it's no skin off of Ace. Right. They're like, you know, as long as we disassociate ourselves that we are not Ace employees coming out to your house, mm-hmm. they don't care that we do these side. I'm like, that's freaking genius. Because you've got a guy that's put 100 sinks in that can oh, yeah. tell you this is the best way to put that sink in. I do it all the time. Sure. I, I remember back in the day when we had lumber yards. Remember yeah. that? Yeah. I mean, the last one I remember was that Nidex in Tomball, and they tore it down. Now there's a drugstore yeah. there or a bank or something, like we need more banks. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, back in the day, those were the dudes. I think McCoy's is still in Tomball, isn't it? You know, it's been so long since I've been there. I think there. it is. I think it's, I'll it's, go with yes on yeah, that. Yeah, it's, it's a lumber yard somewhere down in, in Tomball. And you still get that kind of experience. It's by the rail. Well. It's by the railroad tracks. If I'm not well, mistaken, well, it's between it? Goodson's and the intersection of okay. 20 and 20. It's, okay. not, it's just past Walmart, I think. All right. And so you know, you go in there, and there's that guy you're talking about. Yeah. Just a just a grumpy looking old dude. Yeah. You don't want to talk to him unless yeah. you have to. But yeah. when you do, they're like, "Look, dumbass, it's over here on yeah. aisle seven, and this is how you do it." Yeah. And now they now that you know, and you have this experience in there. But when you hit lows, they're just. I, I, it's all it's or, all smiles and empty promises. Yeah, to me it's <laughs> to me it's just Walmart with more tools. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, and it, it is sad too because um, coming from the rural part of America where we were using two hundred year old tools still to this day, um, when I go buy something that breaks, oh, it's frustrating. It really is. 